Ladies and gentlemen, it is not Q&A Wednesday. I'm not going to say anything about it. It's just Q&A day. It's Q&A every day. Right? Not every day. Not every day. It's not Q&A every day. Today, it's Q&A. So we got a question from Guillermo Alvarez. Love that name. Professional engineer, Solomon Colors. Sale manager, Latin America uh, and Caribbean. Good for you, dude. Uh, and he went for University of Hartford. Uh, awesome. Guille uh, Guillermo, thank you very much for the question. Ding! So what is the benefit of using colloidal silica in concrete made with CSA cements? So Guillermo's question was, how does colloidal silica impact CSA cements? And CSA cements, I believe, are considered to be calcium, uh, sulfate, uh, calcium aluminum sulfate cements. Now, uh, with respect to those, uh, I've used them as a cement additive. Uh, we've worked on many, many projects where we needed exceptionally higher strengths and CSA cements were added to our type one or type, uh, type one, two or type three cements that we were using in our projects. Um, or, you know, you know, I prescribed them in as a cement additive to get that extra boost of strength. Now, when it comes down to uh, combining CSAs and colloidal silica, just like adding colloidal silica to your type one, type one, two, or, or your type three, or any type of cement, um, you're going to get those, those three benefits, you know, uh, pozzolanic reaction um, from the calcium hydroxide and the, the uh, colloidal silica combination. You're also going to get that heterogeneous nucleation effect where you'll get this accelerated cement dissolution and the growth of those calcium silicate hydrates or calcium aluminate silicate hydrates in the hydrated cement matrix. I mean, to a certain degree, you're going to see, you know, those similar mechanisms, albeit it's going to be at a different rate and a, a, a different, um, uh, I don't want to say content, but a different percentage of development than when compared to what happens when the dry, uh, dicalcium and tricalcium silicate dissolve. Um, so I'm, I'm not really, you know, worried about that. I mean, I think there'll be some benefit out of there. And I, I, I just saw this question to a certain degree, um, and I'd like to spend a little bit more time uh, to do some research. Who has done the research? If nobody has, uh, I might ask for some CSA cement, and we can run the test here. We could do a video on it um, to get the answers. Um, but I think the biggest problem is actually going to be finding the right dispersion that is not going to agglomerate when mixed into the CSA cements or the uh, uh, Portland's or the type 1, type 2, type 1, 2 cement that gets mixed up with CSAs. Um, you know, the question is, is is the size of the particle or the chemistry that, you know, the total chemistry that the particle uh, dispersion, and when it hits that, that combination of CSA plus cement, um, or just CSA, is it going to agglomerate? Because for, it, for the colloidal silica to be effective, it needs to be universally dispersed, or to a degree dispersed as it was in the original solution. Um, so that would be my only concern. And with that, I would suggest either using a really large particle size, staying away from smaller particle sizes, uh, those larger particle sizes that are untreated, um, normally a little bit that electrical double layer, and that's what we're concerned about. That electrical double layer is a lot bigger just because of the size, so it's more resilient to the changes in chemistry. Uh, either that, or yeah, those smaller particles, those small electrical double layers, I mean, instead of bouncing off each other, they're just bounce and stick. I mean, you could add, add a lot of super P to that, but I think you always run into that on a smaller level. Um, and then I guess, um, you know, the next thing would be modify the particle. Um, I mean, you're going to give up some of that pozzolanic activity, um, but I would modify the particle, treat it, so that you only have tails of that silica coming out, and that'll control that um, that you know maybe an instantaneous reaction or agglomeration and because you still have a nanoparticle you'll still get that heterogeneous nucleation for cement dissolution um, as well as that nucleation or seeding effect on the surface of that particle and if you have the tail coming out you should still get some pozzolanic activity so yeah that's uh, that, that's what I would primarily be concerned with and I would love to run some tests so uh, 
yeah, hopefully we can continue this research. I'll look into it a little bit more, see if anybody's already done it. Uh, thanks for your question. It really, love it. Absolutely love the question. Hope you have a good one. Uh, let us know if you have any of the questions or concerns. Go concrete, beat asphalt. Mm -hmm.